Hey, what's up? I am Chris Aurelius with the EDM Nightlife Show. It is December 30th, Sunday night. I am at the Artisan, and I have an absolute pleasure to introduce to you, this is one of the pioneers of the electronic dance music scene. Producer, DJ, turntablist. I mean, this guy's paved the way for all of us to enjoy the music that we do today. Talking about none other than DJ Dan. How are you doing tonight, man? Good, man. How are you? Very good to see you. I'm glad that you came into town. You know, I'm so happy to interview you after all these years of being a fan of yours. Two decades listening to your music. I kind of started out when you were back in the day playing Breakbeat with the Funky Techno Tribe. And you had a lot of mixtapes, you know, flooding out to people. People were enjoying your music. I have to ask you, how did you come about to, you know, get your inspiration to make this great music? For, for me, it's always been an escape because I had eight brothers and sisters. So the way that my parents were able to sort of keep me occupied was to buy me records. So that's how I got into it. I was always just buying, you know, and I was always interested in funk records and anything off the wall. Like, you know, I was really into new wave. Um, you know, anything sort of edgy, I, I was always drawn to. And, you know, I was very lucky to have parents that, you know, bought me a new turntable every year and, and always bought me records. So I just kind of became a natural thing that I became a DJ. I didn't plan on becoming a DJ, but uh, someone was college for, but you know, it's, I, I think it's in my blood. It's, it's what I, you know, wake up thinking about and live for. And uh, did you actually have people that you uh, went to see, you know, perform, that you really got into, like, you know what, I can do this as well and just kind of use my own style to create, you know, a different kind of uh, genre for people to enjoy? You know, there was a DJ in Seattle named Dr. Rob, and this guy would just mix everything up. Um, you know, watching him was really inspiring. I, I didn't even realize that you know you could mix two records together, so I'd go watch him. And then Donald Glaude, he used to play at this teen club um, when I was in high school. And I'd go watch him and just think, you know, wow, this is insane. I mean, some of the stuff he would mix together, you wouldn't think of mixing it together, you know, and it's, and, and to take the whole night of playing like, you know, five to eight hours and programming an entire night of music from new wave to house to industrial and to do it well and to do it in somewhat in key um, back then without the tools that we have, you know, for me, it was just a fascination. And I really enjoy mixing different styles together. I think it takes a certain skill to do it, and it, it, it's a challenge that I enjoy. I was going to ask you, when do you think um, you transitioned from playing all these great funky breaks into more of the four-on-the-floor house music that people are really you know, enjoying more, I should say, like, let's say in Vegas today? Well, that's, in that's an interesting question because uh, it's, it's an involved question. Um, I, I was doing a lot of the, I was playing a lot of the breaks dur during a time when I thought house music had become really stale and boring. Um, that was about 1993 and I felt like something needed to make it more edgy because before I was doing that I was playing hard techno in LA at all the early rave parties and so the whole breaks thing was a way of me sort of mixing it up and I, ha I had an amazing collection of you know dubby type break breaks um, but ma what made me stop playing that sound and stop scratching was when I started traveling and no I noticed that a lot of the records that I had been collecting, everybody was playing. And, you know, for me, I don't want to sound like anybody else. And it, I, it, that's wonderful. I, I, you know, love the fact that people find the records. But it's like when I heard a lot of people copying the sound of, of the DJs in San Francisco, what they were doing, and I'm not even saying records, you know, they weren't even, some of the records weren't even mine, you know, Yano and Garth and these guys. But I heard everybody copying that sound and I thought, you know what, if everybody's doing that, I'm going to go do this. And as far as the scratching goes, this is the honest truth. Uh, I was scratching one day at a big party and I noticed about half the crowd not dancing and just staring at me waiting for me to do it. And they were almost just waiting for me to do it. And I love DJing, it's, it's, it's my, my passion, but I DJ so that people will dance. And I did not like that people were just staring at me. So I didn't scratch again after that. And a lot of these, you know, old school DJs back in, they had actual like sets that you used to put together, two hour sets, compared to nowadays where you'll come up to a crowd and they have not really uh, thought about what they're gonna do. 
Um, do you think that makes a big difference in when you perform? That's a great question, because honestly, I about eight months ago, I played an old school techno party with Rondi Core, and it was all vinyl. And I pulled out all the scratching records and all the acapellas and, you know, must have played 45 records in an hour. And it was amazing. And honestly, that ritual of playing vinyl and that feeling is what really got me excited about DJing. Once it went digital, it did become a different feeling for me. It was almost as if somebody had like sort of taken one of my toys away. Um, I, I, you know, it's one of those things you can't, you can't fight it. I mean, uh, you know, tonight I just downloaded a bunch of tracks that, you know, I'm never going to see on vinyl. Um, so, you know, I, I roll with it. But yeah, when the vinyl went away, it did sort of take an element away that I do miss. I mean, I feel the same way. I'm a vinyl junkie. You know, I remember at Dre's when they took away the last turntable in the DJ booth. It pissed me off because, I mean, I used to love just bringing records in there and then, no, everybody's going to the CD players, then the Serato, and it goes from there. And, you know, I mean, like you said, you know, we have to go with the times. However, you can't take away from that real skill that you have as a professional DJ compared to now where they're pretty much look like they're writing a book report in there instead of actually working the equipment. So yeah, enough about the past. Present, you got some really cool EPs. You got a new one, uh, East and West is called, with a... Uh, working with a producer named Jerome and uh, you got a couple cool funky disco tracks on there I, I want to know when it comes to making this EP did you use outboard gear inboard gear do you have a synthesizer you like to use I mean what did you do to make this track and how long did it take you to come out with this the track took about we could, there was two tracks they, they basically took about two days really um, what and then the cool thing about working with people now like Jerome Robbins he's from Toronto and he basically, you know, sent me over a, a music loop and then I put beats over it and then he, we kept going back and forth. And then I found, you know, a vocal that I, an old hip hop vocal from my vinyl, you know, and put it over the top and did it all in Ableton, you know, and pretty much used all samples. I mean, the only outboard piece of gear I use is a little fatty and, you know, you use that for bass lines. But other than that, I mean, it's mostly, you know, sampling and sample packs. So, I mean, I wish there was a little bit more of a mystery to it, but I, I am obsessed with, you know, putting samples together and finding the right things that go together. And I'm, I'm really enjoying working with a lot of different producers right now because I kind of learn, you know, how they approach it as well. I have a lot of your old school records, like Loose Caboose. I had this red vinyl of it. Do you ever um, go back and, you know, try to take samples out of stuff that you used to do and incorporate it into new tracks? Yes. In fact, the Loose Caboose is a tough one because, the, you know, that laugh in that track? I must have used that in like five different tracks and I still think about using it. It's it's hard not to, but it's like your samples are your crayons, you know, and you're going to you're going to you paint this picture. You you know, it's like you, your samples that you personally connect to. That's your way of telling your story through a track. Um, I just did a new track with Funk Investigation. Um, and it's a little bit more techno. Um, I had a lot of Funky House come out this year, but some of the new stuff that's about to come out is a little bit more techno. And it's just interesting because, you know, I'm sort of going through my early rave records and going, wow, that was a groove. I'm gonna sample that and I'm gonna work with this techno guy who's producing this sound. And, you know, it's it's been cool. I mean, that's the way it is. The story continues to evolve like that. You know, I like to play a lot of your tracks. For example, uh, you made a cool remix of New Order's Guilt is a Useless Emotion. I love this song and I play it all the time. Still today, people go off when they hear this track. Do you uh, get a feeling, you know, do you go anywhere that you hear your song playing and you're like, you know what, it just, you know, kind of brings you, brings memories from, you know, what it was going on at that time? Yeah, it's interesting. I'll I'll be I'll, I'll be in a club or something, and I'll hear a mix. And if when you first hear a track that you've done, you don't even you think you're like, wait a minute, I recognize this. Like everything, it's you know you recognize it, but then you're like, whoa, that's my track, you know. And I didn't expect that to come. And it's a nice feeling, and it does bring back memories. I mean, every song almost comes with photographs in my head, you know. Um, and especially New Order, I love New Order. You know, to do a remix for New Order was like one of the biggest honors for me. When was it that you actually felt that there's a change? Like, you know what, I've made it. And th and now, you know, I, I feel like, you know, this is the pinnacle of my, you know, musician, you know, career that I, I have established myself and people know me as, you know, a pioneer. It's, 
it's it's a it's a it's a weird feeling. It's it's a strange it's a strange thing to even talk about because it's. I remember the first time I actually looked out at the crowd and realized, wow, I'm you know a professional DJ, and this is pretty. This is what I'm going to do. You know, the first five years of my career, I thought, you know, how long am I going to mess with this stuff? You know, I got to get serious at some point. Um, but I remember thinking, wow, this is what I'm going to do. And it honestly was kind of scary. It, it, it kind of put this feeling of responsibility in me and, 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 but an important one, a good one. You know, I, I just want to make sure that when I play, I make people happy and I'm, I'm sort of doing what I'm here to do. I do feel music is my form of, of making people happy and, you know, I've always kind of known that's what I'm supposed to do here. And, you know, I do it with cooking as well. So I just feel the I want to make sure people are happy when I DJ. You know, that's pretty much it. What do you like to do for fun, you know, taking your mind off of all this, you know, craziness? Well, it's it's a uh, I have a really great house in L.A. and I'm, I'm really proud of it. I've, I've worked on it for 10 years and it's kind of made it very Bali-esque. And a lot, I have a lot of friends that live in the neighborhood and the thing I love doing the most is just getting all my friends together and cooking and everybody brings different wines and you know, just having get-togethers at my house, cook, different people will DJ, you know, it always involves music, you know, that's one constant thing. But cooking, I'd say, is like my, my, my release, I love it. All these years that you've been DJing, making a mark in this scene, you've always been wearing this hat. A lucky hat that you've always been you know it's kind of like you that you're DJing is how did that all come to be you know it's funny because I in, in the rave days we we used to wear these like big overalls you know and the hat and this whole thing and you know it was funny I, I remember a couple times I would go out without my hat and people didn't recognize me and it just became one of those things it's like I wasn't complete unless I had the hat on so recently I went to Avalon and I went there nobody even recognized me and I thought this is hilarious so, you know, when I DJ, it's, I don't know, it's just kind of one of the security things. It's like a watch or a, you know, part of the outfit. Now let's talk about the way, way future, because I hope to see you making this music and keep DJing for basically as long as it can take. Let's say we're in the way future and you are on your deathbed or you're about to give up your career. Is there one place in the world, no matter where it is, that you would actually want to give a last goodbye set? And in that set, would you consider doing it all vinyl? That would actually it would probably be San Francisco. I'd say it, it would it would have to be San Francisco. I mean, San Francisco was the city that re-inspired me to want to continue to DJ in the early '90s, and I would definitely do it on all vinyl. Yeah, that'd, that'd be amazing. But yeah, absolutely, San Francisco. Where can the whole EDM scene find you? Give us some of your websites. Um, you can go to uh, my website djdan.com or uh, it Facebook, SoundCloud, it's all backslash DJ Dan Music. Once again, everybody in the electronic dance music scene, I want you to know this guy is an absolute pioneer of this scene. If it wasn't for him, it, we would not have the music that we're listening to today. This music has gone mainstream, and now everybody is doing it. Everybody's mom is doing it. It's, it's, it's easy enough to download an app and start making beats off your phone. Do you think that it's, um, it's a whole image thing now, or do you think that it really comes to true talent? Is that going to succeed? Right now, because of, because of the hype on it and, and how new or fresh it is blowing up in this country, yeah, it is a little bit image driven. Um, but again, like anything else, once it has time to mature and settle in, you know, people know the difference between quality music and just pure image. So if I just get any requests to new up and coming DJs, it's, you know, do your research, play good music, um, make it about the quality of the music and, and continue to try to play better for the crowd. And, you know, this is, this is about the people at the end of the day. Uh, well, I've definitely come in full cycle here with DJ Dan, about to be throwing down a sick ass set at the Artisan. Check out his website. I'm Chris Aurelius with the EDM Nightlife Show. See you again soon. Keep it locked.